Hey viewers, welcome to episode 4 of my MATLAB programming course. And uh, today we're going to discuss the for loop as you can see on the screen. So um, I have four examples set up and they are going to explain different ways to use the for loop. For loop is probably the easiest loop in, well, programming. And it is very intuitive, so um, we will just go into it. First we're going to load in this matrix which is matrix A, and I will show you what it looks like. There you go, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it has three rows, three columns, pretty standard stuff. And we are going to just jump into the next, uh, well, the first example. Keep in mind, I am feeding matrix A here into the function, but I'm not feeding it back into, well, the function we're currently in. So matrix A in this function will keep being the same matrix even though I can edit it in the sub functions and we will see more on that later on for example uh, if I want to feed it back it would look something like this because now it would feed back A into our program into our initial function and yeah I'm not going to discuss that right now but just keep in mind that A will remain untouched in this function so every example will start up uh, with the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's all you need to know for now. So on to example number one. So in example number one, we're going to clear the the screen here first, just because I think it's prettier. And we're going to display A, and as you can see, it is this matrix. Just want to show you what it does. So what we're going to do here, and I will discuss the for loop after this. Don't worry. Um, I'm going to change some of the uh, the, the cells to minus one. So basically there is no minus one in here and we will see what it does eventually. So what I have here is the most standard for loop that you can think of. For row is one, two, three. So it's a one with a step of one and ending at three. So which means one, two, and three. Then we add an end at well, the end of the for function, everything between that is considered the for loop. So this is part of the for loop, but this is not. What I'm going to do here is, I'm going to go from row one, and we will see that if I step through it. The first row is one. I'm going to add uh, a minus one, add a uh, one, one. So as you will see, Top left is now a minus one, that's the one one spot. So then the next row is two and the last row is three and then it will step out of the for loop and we will display A and it will say minus one, minus one, minus one. So the one one, two two and three three have become minus one. This is the most basic for loop that you can possibly have. So going from that, we can go back to uh, the initial function, keep in mind, as I said, A is still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so it reset basically. Well, it never got changed, to be honest. And we are going to go into example number two. Once again, clearing and displaying A, and as you can see, it is still the unchanged function, so it did not feed back the changed matrix into our initial function. Keep that in mind, it's a very important quality of a function, uh, and if you're having trouble with that, and um, yeah, now you know why. Because it doesn't automatically feed back everything. As you can see, this one is still the same one because, well, that's the one in the memory from the initial function. Because the initial function doesn't have function in it. That's why it writes it to the workspace and it doesn't get forgotten. And it actually displays that. Anyhow, we're going to do a more complex for loop with two force uh, nested functions, they are called. And you also have two ends then. So where the, this is where the first uh, loop ends. As you can see, if you hover over it, then it will actually show up, well, which one belongs to which. Well, it's not actually hovering over. If you click on it, it will say which one belongs to which one. And you can easily spot there how this, um, well, this structure is, is built. Uh, by the way, this indentation here is made automatically. This one as well. Once you start a for loop uh, and yeah, you detect everything in between, 
or you type anything in between, it will automatically shift forward. If, if it doesn't, so if it looks like this, which is crap, by the way, you should never do that. You can select whatever you want. You can also hit Control A and just do smart. Where is it? Here it is, smart indent and it will automatically make that for you. So you can select your whole function but with control A and just do it in one. Uh, control I, that's the command. It is very useful. It also helps you to spot where your errors are way better than anything else. Um, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to change things to minus one once again. And this time it is based not only on row, but also on the column. So we're going from one to three, and as you can see, column is from one to one, so basically column is one. And we're going to run this, and then we will see that, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, that did not work because I messed it up, and that was all on me. So we're going to go into whatever, yeah, that was example one. Now we're going into example two. I forgot to save after I changed some crap. I changed the, the one to one. We're going to run this. And you know, as you can see currently, this is the display from that A. And now we're going to display the next one. And you can see that column one has been changed, row one, two, and three. And that's exactly what we wanted. One, two, and three for the rows, column only number one. So it did the right thing. So nested functions really just, you stack variables on top of each other and you say for row one, two, and three, I only want to have column one. And yeah, basically that's how simple it is. Of course they can become more complex once you get into real programming, but well, the main functionality stays the same. So uh, anyway, on to example number three, once again, feeding A, and A is once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I've told that enough times now. So uh, this is the same function as we had in the previous one. Only now we have a two here. The two or the, the middle part is the step. So I can also make it like this. And then it says from one to one with step size one. But the, the step size is one when you um, hit the default. So currently it's using the default. You can also do a half or something like that, but obviously for rows in a matrix, half rows don't mean anything. But you can do that, you can, you can do whatever. Uh, as long as you can make it a number, you can do it. You can put pi in there for all I care. I, don't, I really don't care. And neither does the program. It only gives you a warning if you don't have uh, whole numbers where there are so integers if you need integers so anyhow this is as we will see uh, one with step size two up until three so one two three with step size two so it starts at one that it makes a step of two so it ends at three there's no two here so the two gets skipped because of this step size so if i uh, were to do um, one, three, ten. It says one, three on, it's four, three on, it's seven, three on, it's ten. So, yeah, it should be pretty clear what's happening here. It's plus three, plus two, plus three, and that's exactly this three, of course. And here it's plus two because there's a two. Anyhow, continuing on, we have a nested for loop once again. This time we are going to once again change the matrix. We're going to change it for column, uh, sorry, row one row and three, and it's going to be column one only. Uh, you can of course do whatever you want there. So as you can see, row one, row three, only column one got changed. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. On to example number four then, which is um, a little more complex, but it is still easy to follow. Uh, we will first, make a new A matrix. Uh, a is um, now consists of four A matrices. And if I display that, you can see that this is our, is, is basically, so yeah, only this part, is one of the matrices. This is one of them. So the one that's over here. 
and then bottom left has one and uh, bottom right has one. So four of the eight matrices becoming one A matrix. And that is because I wanted to show you one last thing and that is, well, this notation, which is basically um, for defining uh, yeah, uh, how do I call that? A vector, basically. So as you can see, it just takes the numbers that are in there and it just treats them one by one. So uh, you can include complete rows. So this one will become like this. It's one, two, three, then five and six. So you can actually do it like this as well it would result in the same thing. But you can imagine that you would want to have the other notation, so this notation, in some cases. You can combine pretty much whatever you want, number-wise or even variable-wise, in such a structure. I don't know what it's actually called, but it doesn't really matter what it's called, as long as you know how to use it. So these are sharp uh, brackets, whereas the other ones, so like this one, here you have the sharp brackets as well. But this one is the round one. So, yeah, should be pretty obvious. Anyhow, so we're going to change row one, four, and five. And for those rows, we're going to get row one, two, and three, row five, and row six. So we're going to change everything to minus one. Yeah, you can see the matrix here. I'll display it again, just uh, for clarity. Hang on. There you go. And we're going to run this. And then we're going to display A once again. And you will see that row 1, uh, 4 and 5 have been altered. But not this column. And this column was row, uh, column 3. And that is the only... Uh, sorry, column 4. That's the only one that's missing from this. So it does exactly what it's supposed to do. And of course I checked that before I did this. <laughs> so it's not too much of a miracle. So that's all I have to say about for loops. For loops are interesting they're very useful but they're not really complex um, as i said you start with four you end with end you basically define a variable that you're going to use uh, although you don't have to uh, but it's generally used uh, because then you actually can use your counter to well do something in the loop so you don't have to use a counter you can also just say for one and then it will just run. But yeah, normally you would want it like that. Uh, you can also do uh, true or false here. For row is true. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything, but if you want to, you can do that. Uh, you can basically do whatever statement you want, although I do recommend that you understand things first before you start doing crazy crap. But well, that's about it. So all I have to say about this, as I said, it's not very complex. It is just, uh, well, a very simple loop structure and you should be able to manage it. So hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.